Welcome to Main Street in Fallon, Nevada. In this segment, we are going to look into the history of Main Street, and then we'll take a stroll down the museum's Main Street, which features homes from the past. Did you ever wonder how Fallon got its name? Mike and Eliza Fallon established a post office on their ranch in 1896. By 1902, they had sold their ranch to Warren W. Williams. Mr. Williams had the land platted, which means to divide the land up into lots. He then advertised the lots for sale to create a town. Even though Mr. and Mrs. Fallon had moved on, their name stayed and Fallon was officially designated the city in December of 1908. Because Mr. Williams provided the land for the Main Street, he insisted it be named after the state where he was born. How do you spell the state of Maine? That's right, it's spelled M-A-I-N-E. And that is how Main Street in Fallon is spelled. There is a funny story about Main Street. Well, Mr. Williams gave the land for the north end of the street. Mr. Oates gave the land for the south end. To figure out how wide the street should be, they decided they would pace off a certain number of steps. Mr. Williams paced off the north end, and Mr. Oates paced off the south. Well, Mr. Williams was a very tall man with a long stride, and Mr. Oates was a very short man with a short stride, so the size of their steps was very different. That is why, even today, the north end of Main Street near the post office is four lanes wide, while the south end near the museum is only two. We said earlier that we would stroll down the museum's Main Street, so we will start our trip here at the earliest house. What do you think was used to make the walls of this house? Yes, they are bricks, but they are a very special brick, called adobe. Adobe bricks are made of adobe mud, with a little sand and sometimes a little straw added to the mix. Once formed, the bricks are dried in the sun. Now, look up towards the roof. Note its overhang. It seems very wide, almost like a porch roof. It could be a porch, but think about what happens to mud when it gets wet. Wouldn't you want a wide overhang, like a porch roof, to protect your walls from melting in the rain or snow? Now, let's look at some of the things in the kitchen of this house from over 100 years ago. As you do so, you may want to write down some things that are different in this kitchen from your kitchen at home. What did you see? Every kitchen needs water. At home, your modern kitchen has a sink and water faucets. The kitchen in our adobe house was considered a modern kitchen in its time because it had running water. Do you see where you get the water in this kitchen? That's right. That green thing is called a pump. We have a pump in the discovery room at the museum, so let's see how it works. Would you enjoy having to do that every time you wanted some water? What else can be found in this kitchen? Many people point out the stove and telephone, although they are not too unusual 
as kitchens do have stoves and many have telephones today. But wait, there is something about this stove that makes it different from the one you have in your home. This stove doesn't work by using gas or electricity, it burns wood. If you had had a stove like this at home long ago, you would have had to keep your mother's wood box full. Remember, water from the pump was often cool or even cold. Anyone who needed hot water had to heat it on the stove. Here are more things in this kitchen that are different from what you may see today. Look at the stove closely. On top of it there is an iron. It's sitting on the stove because it has to be heated on the stove to work. In the middle of the stove's warming shelf, there is an appliance in the shape of a triangle. Does your toaster at home have to be heated on the stove to work? Yes, this is a toaster. It holds four pieces of bread, and the heat of the stove toasts it. You had to watch the bread closely, or it would burn. Here's something else that is on the stove. Check out the waffle iron. Does your mom have one like this, or does she have one that has to be plugged into an electrical socket? These items in this kitchen aren't seen in your kitchen today. They're shaving and bathing supplies. Why would these things be in this kitchen? That's right. At this time, most places only had outhouses. There were almost no inside bathrooms. There was also no central heating, so during cold weather, the kitchen was the warmest room in the house, which made it the best place to take a bath. 